Good morning. Welcome back. We are now at uh, Acts chapter 25. We last stopped in chap chapter 24 and I did have uh, some miscalculation in the computation of the 12 days since uh, Paul arrived in Jerusalem to worship. But we will come to that shortly. So Father, once again, we thank you for this blessing of assembling together in Jesus' name to study your word. I know in years past, many have passed on without the light. And we thank you for the light. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the truth that you have given to us, before us. So we ask of you, Holy Spirit, to help open up our hearts and our minds, to give us understanding of your truth, that we will find applications and become better witness, witnesses for you. In Jesus' name, Amen. So as I said, um, last week when we were when we were in chapter 24 i showed you this timeline and this timeline and you see x24 i put xxx because i've i'm going to cancel this but just to to show you uh the wrong slide last last week when um when you see that uh, paul paul was in Jerusalem, was in the temple, and for six days. And you see this in uh, Acts chapter 21, verse 27. Uh, now, when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews from Asia, seeing him in the temple, stood up the whole crowd and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man who teaches all men everywhere. Oh, yes. So I'm reading from Acts chapter 21, verse 27. Now when the seven days were almost ended, he was arrested in the temple. So when you look at the slide last week, he was in a temple uh, with the Nazarites, the four, four men. So you have uh, one day here, day three there, you know, first day, second day, day four, day five, day six. So you have one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and then he met. He was then he was arrested in in the temple, uh, but that was only day four, day one, day two, day three, day four. Uh, he had seven days, almost seven days. So when the seventh day came, he was arrested. So uh, Sister Priscilla brought this to my attention, and I had to improve on my arithmetic. So here we go. This is the correct slide without the x x x. So Paul arrived in Jerusalem day one. Day two, he met with uh, James and the elders. Day three, he was in the temple with the Nazarites. So that is one day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day. On the seventh day, on the seventh day, when now when seven days were almost completed. So on the seventh day, he was arrested in the temple. And the next day, in uh, day number 10, he met with the Jewish council. And day 11, there was a threat against his life. And so Claudius Lysias decided that he be taken to Caesarea. And he did. So the 12th day, he arrived in Caesarea and he waited. So if you, if you look at uh, 20, uh, Acts 23 verse uh, 33, Acts 23 verse 33 when they came to Caesarea and had delivered the letter to the governor they also presented Paul to him now when the governor had read he asked what province he was from and when he understood that Paul was from Cilicia he said I will hear you when your accusers have also have come and he commanded him to be kept in Herod's Praetorium you remember that right so we come to verse to chapter 24 now, after five days, Ananias, the high priest, came down with the elders and a certain orator named Tertullus. They gave evidence to the governor against Paul. This happened in Caesarea in the presence of Felix. So, after five days. So, we go back to the table. 
So Paul arrived in Caesarea day 12 and then uh, after five days, one day, two day, three day, four day. And then on the fifth day, the hearing was conducted. The, the Sanhedrin represented by the high priest and the elders and the lawyer Tertullus uh, came and they gave evidence against Paul. So this is as best as I can uh, gather from the word of God numbering the days so what did paul say even in acts 24 verse 11 when he went in his defense uh, when he was given permission to speak in acts chapter 24 verse 10 then paul after the governor had nodded to him to speak answered in as much as i know as you have been for many years a judge of this nation I do the more cheerfully answer for myself. Verse 11, note this, because you may have ascertained that it is no more than 12 days, no more than 12 days since I went up to Jerusalem to worship. He came back from his third mission trip to Jerusalem to worship in Jerusalem and also to bring and to hand over the Offerings which he collected from the churches in Macedonia, Macedonia in, in Athens, in, in Corinth, from the Gentile churches. So, 12 days since I went up to Jerusalem to worship. So, we go back to the table. So, day 1 he arrived in Jerusalem, right? So, day 12 he arrived in Caesarea. So, it has been 12 days, 12 days since he arrived in Jerusalem. And now he is before Felix in Caesarea. And that's what he meant. It has been no more than 12 days since I went up to Jerusalem to worship. The 12 days did not include the days of waiting for the hearing to start. But it is to say that it's been 12 days since I arrived in Jerusalem. And now I'm here with you, Felix, in Caesarea. So I hope this uh, will clear uh, what I <coughs> what I presented wrongly last week. So you can you can erase the last week's table, okay? So we move on now to chapter twenty five, and in chapter twenty five we have uh, Paul in defense, Paul the defender, and in this chapter we find him defending uh, himself uh, before. Uh, this Festus, Festus was the one who took over from Felix even as we ended chapter 24 last week. Yeah, because uh, there was a conflict between the, Gru the Greeks and the Jews. And the Greeks won and the Greeks plundered the Jews. Caesar came to hear about it from Rome. He didn't like it, so he had Felix replaced. So in came a more worthy successor in the person of Festus. So, um, in the first part, uh, verse 1 to 12, you see Festus meeting with the Jewish leaders and then Paul appealed to Caesar. In the second part, Paul was presented to Agrippa, King Agrippa. And here you see uh, two parts within this second section, Festus and Agrippa uh, meeting, verses 13 to 22, and then Festus, Agrippa, and Paul were together in verses 23 to 27. So let's uh, begin. Acts chapter 25. Now, when Festus had come to the province, to the province where? In Caesarea. Now, when Festus had come to the province, after three days, he went up from Caesarea to Jerusalem. Then the high priest and the chief men of the Jews informed him uh, against Paul and they petitioned him, asking a favor against him that he would summon him to Jerusalem while they lay in ambush along the road to kill him, kill Paul. But Festus answered that Paul should be kept in at Caesarea and that he himself was going there, going there shortly. Therefore, he said, 
Let those who have authority among you go down with me and accuse this man to see if there is any fault in him. So just to give you the, the geography that you might have understanding, I mean easier comprehension. So we look at uh, this map which I've shown you previously. Now, so uh, uh, Festus arrived in Caesarea and after three days, he made his way to Jerusalem. And these people, the, 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 the Sanhedrin in Jerusalem, requested of Festus to bring Paul from Caesarea to Jerusalem that they might judge him, that they might, you know, uh, uh, put him to trial. But Festus said, no, uh, you accusers, and in the Roman law, the accuser must be present in, 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 in I mean, must be, the accuser must be present in person to accuse the accused. Um, that is the law. So you, you, you have to be present. So if you guys want to accuse Paul, you have to go down to Caesarea. And that's what he said. He'll be going there shortly. So let's go back to the word. Now when Festus had come to the province, after three days he went up from Caesarea to Jerusalem. Then the high priest and the chief men of the Jews informed him against Paul. You know, as we have read, after two years, verse 27 of chapter 24, but after two years, Portius Festus succeeded Felix and Felix wanting to do the Jews a favor, left Paul abound. After two years, these religious leaders still had a grudge, still harbor that hatred against Paul. I mean, you thought after two years, since no charges were, were found credible that can be laid upon Paul, perhaps they could just move on, but they did not. They had this hatred harbored against Paul that they would not give up. So now, after two silent years, and they still brought up this to Festus. Then the high priest informed him, <coughs> and the chief men informed him of, uh, of this person Paul, and they petitioned him, asking a favor against him that he would summon, that Festus would summon Paul to Jerusalem, while in secret they were planning an ambush while they lay in ambush along the road to kill Paul. That was their intention. When they first wanted to kill him, Claudius Lysias came in and, in, and, and disrupt their plan. You know, Now that Festus is in place, they wanted to do the same and ambush Paul along the road. But, Paul, but Festus answered that Paul should be kept at Caesarea and that he himself was going there shortly. That means after Jerusalem, he was returning to Caesarea. Therefore, he said, let those who have authority among you go down with me and accuse this man. So you want to accuse him, bring charges against him, you must be there in person. Paul is in, in, in Caesarea, go there as well. So accuse this man to see if there is any fault in him. Verse 6. And when he had remained among them more than 10 days. He went down to Caesarea. I guess as a new governor, he wanted to, to know the lay of the land, to know the people, so he stayed for more than 10 days. Then he returned to Caesarea. And the matter was urgent, so it seems. And the next day, sitting on the judgment seat, he commanded Paul to be brought to be brought before him. So, when he had come, the Jews who had come down from Jerusalem stood about and laid many serious complaints against Paul, which they could not prove. There were no evidence. While he answered for himself, neither against the law of the Jews, that means this was Festus after listening to all this, he answered for himself, neither neither uh, against the law of the Jews nor against the temple nor against Caesar have I offended oh, sorry this was Paul who answered for himself not Festus 
This was Paul who answered for himself, neither against the law of the Jews, nor against the temple, nor against Caesar have I offended in anything at all. I have no blame. I have done nothing wrong. But Festus, wanting to do the Jews a favor, answered Paul and said, Are you willing to go up to Jerusalem and there be judged before me, before me, Festus, not before the Jewish leader, before me concerning these things? Now, when we have read verse 8, we would logically come to this course of action, and that is that Paul be released. Since there were no charges credible, no charges that could be laid upon Paul, he did not sin against, that, that's really, he did not break the law of the Jews, he did nothing against the temple, and definitely not against Caesar. So, why keep him? Why not just release Paul? But you see, for political reasons, perhaps that Festus did not want to, you know, in his first few days at work, he, he did not want to, to run in opposition with the religious leaders, and he wanted to do them a favor. Now you see, he has a change of heart. Because earlier he told the religious leaders in Jerusalem, if you want to bring charges against him, uh, settle it in Caesarea, come down with me. But now, in Caesarea, when he heard nothing that is of offense against Paul, uh, he said, okay, are you willing? He asked Paul, are you willing to go up to Jerusalem and there be judged before me? concerning these things. I mean, what are they doing? These, these are just political delays. But anyway, Paul uh, had to give consent because in the Roman law, to shift a case from one location to another, the accused must consent to this. That is the Roman law. And Paul must consent to this. If he says yes, then they can bring him to Jerusalem. If he says no, they can not. So Paul answered, what did he say in verse 9? So Paul said, I stand at Caesar's judgment seat where I ought to be judged. To the Jews I have done no wrong as you very well know. For if I am an offender or have committed anything deserving of death, I do not object to dying. But if there is anything in these things of which this man accused me, no one can deliver me to them. I appeal to Caesar. What has Paul just done? Paul has just exercised his prerogative as a Roman citizen. As a Roman citizen, you have every right to appeal to Caesar. And he said, I Stand at Caesar's judgment seat. Here he was in Caesarea, in the presence of Festus, the Roman governor. And this is in the court approved and authorized by the Roman emperor. So, this he stood, there he stood, at Caesar's judgment seat. So, this is Caesar's court, applying Roman rule. Roman law. And he said, I stand at Caesar's judgment seat where I ought to be judged. Why did he say where I ought to be judged? Because if I go to Jerusalem, he knew, he knew if he had gone to Jerusalem, he will not get a fair trial. Death was certain. These people have already decided that he should be put to death. And so he will not get a fair trial. So why go? So he said, if there is nothing in these things of which this man accused me, no one can deliver me to them. I appeal to Caesar. And who is this Caesar? This is Emperor Nero. Emperor N Nero, uh, he ruled... Caesar is just a title. The name of this person is Nero. So Nero ruled from AD 54 to AD 68. AD 54 to 68, he started well, he started okay, but in his last few years, I think he, I mean, history show recorded for us, that he went a bit uh, 
eccentric, a bit crazy, very cruel, very brutal. He even killed people and light them up uh, to, to uh, burn them up so that they light up his, his garden and he burned down Rome so that he can rebuild the place. But in burning down Rome, he put the blame on the Christians. So, Paul said, I appeal to Nero. I appeal to Caesar. Then Festus, when he had conferred with the council. So Festus also had his own council. This is separate from the Sanhedrin. This is not the Jewish religious council. This is the Roman council that Festus had around him even in Caesarea. And so for critical cases, for big decisions, uh, he conferred with his council. And after he had done so, he answered Paul, you have appealed to Caesar. To Caesar you shall go. Anyway, he did not have much choice. If a Roman citizen put in that request, he had to uh, 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 oblige. And so to Caesar you shall go. So that was uh, the first part. Uh, this was, this is uh, Paul before, no, that was uh, Festus and the Jewish leaders. That was the first part, Festus and the Jewish leaders. Now we go on to the second part, Paul before Agrippa. So verse 13. And after some days, King Agrippa and Bernice came to Caesarea to greet Festus. Now, who are King Agrippa and Bernice? Now, just to give you a quick history. Uh, the great grandfather of King Agrippa was the one who killed the Bethlehem babies. You know, when Jesus was born and, and and the king heard, who is this? Because people were saying, the king has come, the king has come. Who is this king? Who is this king who, who has come to, to threaten, who might threaten his kingdom? So he wanted no opposition. He wanted no competition. So he wanted to put all the babies. He heard, he was told that a baby has been born. So he decided to kill all the babies. And so the great-grandfather of this king Agrippa, in verse 13 that we have just read, killed the Bethlehem babies. And then his own father, King Agrippa's father, was the one who put to death the Apostle James. The Apostle James. We, we, we read this in, in the book of Acts, I think in chapter 12. So, he comes from a line of very evil kings. And this guy is no different. This guy is definitely uh, uh, an unrighteous person. For we see, he was with Bernice. Now, the word, the Bible did not say wife Bernice. Unlike, unlike when we read in, uh, when we read in chapter 24, we had this Felix who came and they, let's, let me show you this. Drusilla. Let's see. Huh? Felix. I want to find you this. Uh, give me a minute. Verse 24 of Acts 24. Yes, so the Bible is very clear. For example, in Acts 24 verse 24, and after some days when Felix came with his wife Drusilla, who was Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. When Felix came with his wife, it was his wife. So it was described and noted that Drusilla was his wife. But now, as we read here in verse 13, after some, some days, 
King Agrippa and Bernice came to Caesarea to greet Festus. They stayed together. They cohabited. They were partners. But they were not husband and wife. Though they live and behave as one. They were half siblings, meaning that Bernice was the half sister of King Agrippa. Do not be surprised that King Agrippa's father had more than one wife. And so from their children. And so Bernice was his half sister. And history record for us that uh, she came and be with King Agrippa. And history also recorded for us it was an incestuous, incest, they committed incest, incestuous relationship. That means sexual relationship between siblings. This is incest. And that's how unrighteous this couple was. And they came. King Agrippa and Bernice came to Caesarea to greet Festus. Why? Because Festus was a new governor. So, like a courtesy call, diplomatic call, they came to uh, greet Festus in Caesarea uh, to introduce themselves and, and to get to know him. King Agrippa is from the north. Now, he was given, he was given rule over a small area in the northern part, in the northern part of Israel, the Palestine area. So, this is Jerusalem here in the south right jerusalem and here is galilee in the north the path so up here he was given a uh, rule over this area yeah and he was also given authority over the temple he has the authority to appoint the high priest of the temple even in jerusalem so matters that relate to uh, the Jewish law, Jewish religious law, Jewish culture. He's an expert and he has, a, he has, has an authority over this. So he's not unfamiliar with the Jewish law. He is. He was, I mean, because he was a Hellenistic Jew. That means a Jew, but one who grew up in the Greek culture. But he was an expert in Jewish culture and Jewish law. That means Jewish matters. He was very familiar. And so this king, so this uh, uh, Festus took advantage of this and wanted uh, Agrippa to help him in this matter. So we read on. Verse 14. When they had been there many days, Festus laid Paul's case before the king. Saying, there is a certain man left a prisoner by Felix. My predecessor left this case for me. About whom the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me when I was in Jerusalem, asking for a judgment against him. To them I answered, it is not the custom of the Romans to deliver any man to destruction or it means to death. It is not the custom of the Romans to deliver any man to destruction before the accused meets the accuser face to face and has opportunity to answer for himself concerning the charge against him. Therefore, when they had come together without any delay, the next day I sat on the judgment seat and commanded the man to be brought in. So Paul was brought before the religious leaders. When the accusers stood up, they brought no accusation against him, against Paul, of such things as I suppose, as I suspected. So nothing, nothing that Festus could lay a charge on Paul, nothing that he could find Paul guilty of, but had some questions against him about their own religion and a certain Jesus who had died, whom Paul affirmed to be alive. So in the mind of Festus, as he told this to Agrippa, 
This was just a religious dispute. It is an internal matter amongst themselves, but it doesn't concern the Roman law. Yeah? And because, and, and I know, he, he said about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died. Festus just arrived in town. He had no idea. He, he probably had not much knowledge of Jesus' birth, Jesus' ministry, Jesus' death, Jesus' burial, his resurrection. But, but Agrippa knew. Being a Jew, a Hellenistic Jew. So, they, they had some questions about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died. So you see the uncertainty here in the mind of uh, Festus, whom Paul affirmed. He didn't say anything else. He just said, whom Paul affirmed to be alive. And because I was uncertain of such questions, I, I do not know the answers. I asked whether he was willing to go to Jerusalem and there be judged concerning these matters. But when Paul appealed to be reserved for the decision of Augustus, now Augustus is also referring to Caesar. Augustus means majestic, Augustus means venerable, that means to be worshipped. Um, and in fact, it, it was. In, in the Roman Empire, you know, Caesar is God, Caesar is God, and, and, and if you don't worship Caesar as God, you can lose your life. So, Paul appealed to be reserved for the decision of Augustus. I commanded him to be kept till I could send him to Caesar. So he kept Paul in Caesarea until he could send Paul to Rome to have the audience with Caesar. Then Agrippa said to Festus, I would I also would like to hear the man myself. I also would like to hear the man myself. So tomorrow, he said, you shall hear him. Festus said, okay, fine, the appointment will be fixed. It shall be tomorrow. You shall hear him. So verse 23. So the next day, when Agrippa and Bernice had come with great pomp, and had entered the auditorium with the commanders and the prominent men of the city at Festus' command. Paul was brought in. <coughs> so even if, if you, as you look at verse 23, you can almost imagine the contrast. Here you have Agrippa and Bernice coming with great pomp, with fantasy of fantasy. If you have been to Disneyland, or if not, you can just go to Universal Studio at Sentosa. You know, every evening there will be a parade. You know, all the, the characters of Disney World, Disneyland will be paraded and they got music, they got drums, they are dressed in all their uh, colorful attire. It is just, it, it, it is just a, a, a fun fair. It is just a, 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 a place, a, a sight to behold. And here it was, King Agrippa and Bernice had come with great pomp. You know, like National Day Parade with all the drums and the frills and the, and the noise and the celebra celebration. And they entered the auditorium. And if you have been to Caesarea, and I showed you pictures before, Facing the Mediterranean Sea, you see the amphitheater is really beautiful. I mean, for a structure like this to be con uh, constructed all this 2,000 years ago, it was really a feat. And that place must be filled. Thousands of people, I, I'm told it's about 25,000. Um, and, and it was just a grand entrance and, that, and when they had entered the auditorium with the commanders and the prominent men of the city at Festus command so this pomposity before and what came after Paul was brought in Paul the prisoner with no 
change of attire, probably in his same, uh, 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 you know, the tuning and, and, and whatever he had on. A simple, short man, bald and bow-legged, with no one accompanying him except probably the two guards, one chain on his left and one chain on his right. And there he was, against this grand audience and the VIPs, here was a simple man brought in. You see the contrast? And that's what Paul was enduring. And Festus said, King Agrippa and all the men who are here present with us, you see this man about whom the whole assembly of the Jews petitioned me. That is an exaggeration. Not the whole assembly of the Jews, not the whole of Jerusalem, not all the Jews came and said, Festus, Festus, please, please, you know, put this guy, Paul, to trial. It was only the religious leaders, the few who went from Jerusalem to Caesarea to place charges against Paul. But this, Festus said, the whole assembly of the Jews petitioned me. And you know how often the enemy liked to amplify, exaggerate charges, things at us. So, both at Jerusalem and here, crying out that he was not fit to live any longer. So, for them, they have already announced the decision, the judgment, and that was death, the penalty of death, the penalty by death. So, it was a death sentence. He was not fit to live any longer. But when I found out that he had not committed, he had committed nothing deserving of death, and that he himself had appealed to Augustus, I decided to send him. Send him where? Send him to Rome. Send him to Caesar. I have nothing certain to write to my Lord. My Lord, referring to Caesar, referring to Nero, referring to Augustus, same person. I have nothing certain to write to Nero concerning Paul. Therefore, I have brought him out before you and especially before you, King Agrippa, so that after the examination has taken place, that I may have something to write. For it seems to me unreasonable to send a prisoner and not to specify the charges against him. So what was Agrippa saying? He's, he's saying that I don't want to look stupid in front of Nero. I don't want to look incompetent in front of Caesar. Because if I send Paul all the way to Rome, and Nero finds out that this is a religious dispute, nothing contradicting, nothing that contradicts the Roman law. Then why did Festus send this Paul to Rome in the first place? You are wasting Nero's time, and for that he might be punished. And that was. King Agrippa's uh, uh, anxiety, that was his concern because he, he had nothing to write to Rome to place against Paul. So, King Agrippa, can you do me a favor? Can you examine him? That since you are so uh, uh, familiar with the Roman law and Roman matters, Roman culture, can, can, can you examine him and thereafter uh, give me something to write to place the charges against Paul so that when I send him to Rome it will not be an empty dispatch there will be charges against Paul therefore I brought him out before you and especially before you Agrippa so that after the examination has taken place 
I may have something to write for it seems to me unreasonable to send a prisoner and not to specify the charges against him and this has not this uh, episode has not ended actually it goes on to chapter 26 I think all the way to verse 20 I believe yeah but we will stop here we will continue in this drama come next week so father we thank you for your word we thank you that you are always watching over us even as you have watched over Paul and it is your providence that you have brought Paul uh, all the way to Rome and even as he did he faced opposition but you have protected him you have preserved him that he will not end up in Jerusalem and that by your providence his destination in his heart was Rome and that's where you wanted him to be so I pray Lord that your will be done in each and every one of our lives that wherever you want to place us and send us let nothing come between our desire and our destination that your will be done and if it were so Lord may your grace be sufficient for us to overcome all this and may your will be done in and through us that in the final in the final stage Lord we would have fulfilled your will wherever you wish to plant us and use us nothing disrupting your plan for us so we thank you once again we praise you acknowledging that you are God you are the sovereign one you rule the heavens and you rule the kingdom and your kingdom is over each and every one of us and in us we thank you and we praise you in Jesus name Amen